What's up guys, this is Nick from Art Study Poker, and in today's video, we going to be continuing the Poker 101 series with today's topic covering GTO, also known as Game Theory Optimal. So I've had a few comments, I guess in the comment section of a few of my videos, I've had a few people ask me to try to do a video on this. I've actually done a few videos on GTO type stuff. There's an early vlog that I did maybe a couple months ago on exploitative play versus GTO play. There is a video, I believe, in the How to Beat Live Low Stakes Poker playlist or series that is applying GTO, where I show you guys how to basically apply that to live low stakes games. And, and I'm going to mention a little bit of what I mentioned in, in that video in this one for you guys that need a little bit of a further understanding on GTO. But this is a Poker 101 video, so it is going to be more for you novice guys, you guys that are definitely trying to become more fundamentally sound in your poker game. So what is GTO? What is the concept of a game theory optimal poker strategy? Essentially, game theory optimal poker is very mathematically driven. It is very based on playing the, at the correct frequencies. It is essentially in a very simple way, I guess the most simple way I can put it is it's playing a very unexploitable strategy, a very balanced strategy, basically to where you're never getting out of line and your opponents can't exploit you. So essentially, for example, let's say you are out of position and you go to C-bet on a six high flop and you are the under the gun raiser. On a six high flop, there's not going to be a ton of really strong hands in your range. Like you're not going to probably make a lot of sets, a lot of two pairs, a lot of straights, because you're going to be raising a lot of cards that are broadways, bigger pairs. So oftentimes the top of your range is going to be like pocket aces and pocket kings. You're going to miss that type of flop a lot more often than not, though. All your broadways obviously miss. And if you get out of line and you see bet way too often on this type of flop, then any competent and or thinking opponent, I guess, will be able to exploit you. They can just raise the flop against you at will with almost their whole range. And it's going to be very hard for you to defend against because you're just not going to have enough strong hands that you can continue with. So that is a pretty simple example as far as when you're getting out of line and you're not playing, I guess, closer to game theory optimal. If you were playing more game theory optimal in that situation, you'd be checking pretty much most of the time. And you wouldn't just be checking, you know, your weak hands, all the hands that you miss. You're still going to be checking hands like your over pairs. So you can check call, sometimes check raise. It's going to help protect your range and keep you from being exploitable. And that's the whole point of playing a game theory optimal strategy. Now, since this is a Poker 101 video, or it's a video that's part of that series, a lot of you guys are not going to be playing in games where you have to apply these concepts to where you have to worry about balancing your ranges and being unexploitable. The most profitable way to win in the games that you guys are playing, whether it's a live low stakes game or the micro stakes online or a private, you know, like a home game or something or a game in, in a club where it's a low limit game of some sort, these games are beat for the max by very exploitative strategies. Strategies where you do not balance your ranges, you mostly just hammer hammer these guys for value, you pick spots to bluff, and then you don't do a whole lot of bluff catching. And all of that, that strategy in itself, is not game theory optimal. Like when I play guys in 1-2 games, 2-5, even if there's a rare 510 going or if you know I'm playing in a, in a live low stakes PLO or if I'm playing lower stakes online I'm usually playing a very exploitative strategy and I'm only balancing when I think that there are opponents at the table that I need to worry about balancing a little bit and, and mixing up my strategy mixing up my strategy with the regulars and stuff but if you guys are playing with some players that you don't play with that often or players that you don't even know at all and it's a lower stakes game then you don't need to worry about applying any kind of balance to your game and any kind of game theory optimal strategies. Until you see, or until you come across a table or, or multiple opponents at your table that seem like they're exploiting you or they seem like smarter or better solid players, 
that's only when you need to start worrying about balancing your strategies and mixing mixing your strategies and playing a little bit more balanced and, and unexploitative. So the way that you do apply GTO, and, and I said this in the How to Beat Live Low Stakes Poker series in that video titled Applying GTO. If you guys have not watched that, I would suggest watching that after this. Actually, I'm going to link that video to the end of this one, I've just decided. So I think that'll be a good idea and a, a good one for you guys to watch. But what I say in that one, I'm just going to say right here again, because I think it's worth reiterating and saying to you guys over and over, in lower stakes games, whether they're, whether or not they're live or online, the way to apply GTO and, and the way that you guys, the reason that you should learn GTO and start to dig into that a little bit, because if you know you guys are sitting there thinking to yourself watching this right now, well, Nick, if I'm only going to play in, in a live low stakes game the rest of my life recreationally, that's what I like to do. That's what I like to do for fun. And if you're telling me to never really play like balanced or play, you know, an unexploitable strategy, then why do I need to know GTO? Well, knowing what is optimal will help you guys adjust and become better exploitative players. If you see a player getting out of line and you understand what the correct strategy is or what is optimal, then you guys will be able to adjust and exploit much more efficiently. You'll see it much quicker. You'll see a spot where you're like, hey, I know this guy's not supposed to be c-betting this much on these types of boards, so I can start just raising him on the flop. Or, hey, this guy is three-betting me almost every time I raise, and I know that he's not doing it at the optimal percentage. So I can start four-betting him much wider, and that's how you exploit him in that spot, for example. You can also just tighten up your opening range, but you can do probably a mix of both. But the whole point is, is that if you guys know what's optimal and you know... And I'm not saying you're going to figure out GTO. Nobody has, and there's not a perfect way to play poker. But if you guys use software like PO Solver, which you guys have seen in some of my videos, that is a GTO solver. If you use Poker Snowy, then you'll learn to play a much more balanced and GTO type of strategy using that software. If you guys use this type of stuff, you'll be able to see what is optimal in certain situations, in certain hands, You know, whether it's pre-flop or post-flop, and then you'll be able to adjust based on that and maximally exploit your opponents. The reason that you can do this is that your opponents, pretty much 99% of them at the games you guys play in, are not going to be good enough to counter you back. They're not going to be able to exploit you exploiting them. They're not going to be able to come up with really solid counter strategies to take advantage of you when you're getting out of line, basically taking advantage of them. And I know that was a mouthful, but you guys that watch my videos, you seem pretty smart, so I think you get it. But yeah, essentially, learning GTO will help you be able to understand what is optimal so that you guys can see what these guys are doing in your games, what they're doing not optimally, and that'll help you in a more efficient way be able to quickly start exploiting them and being able to adjust right away at your games and being able to maximize your profit. So. I know that there was a lot going on for a Poker 101 video, or a video that's part of this series, but that is essentially what GTO is. If you guys have questions or comments, need me to clarify this topic even further, then go ahead and let me know in the comment section. This will be the video to do it. Like I said, I'm sure you guys will see in the bottom right corner, I'm going to link that Applying GTO video from the How to Beat Live Low Stakes Poker series. And I think these two videos will help give you guys a pretty good understanding of what I'm talking about. So until next time, this is Nick from Arch City Poker. Take care.